Hey guys, badly in need of a haircut, Jason here, and this is a video I've been excited to make for a while. This one's for sure going in my channel's creativity playlist, and it's a tutorial on how to make a song from start to finish in Audacity. Basically, I'll be demonstrating this process step by step by going through how I made my song, Tears from the Sky. And at the same time, it's also a how to sound like Travis Scott slash Lil Mosey tutorial, just because I think stylistically my song is most similar to those artists. Hopefully it all makes sense, there's a lot going on here, but without any further ado, let's get into it. So we're only a few seconds into the video right now, but I do want to say this video right here is definitely one of my bigger projects when it comes to making a video, just because there is a lot that goes into making music. So I want to try to structure this video to make it as easy to follow as possible. In the middle of this video, there's going to be a structured, more rigid tutorial type section where I show you how to record vocals and how to edit them. That's going to be the most rigid part of the video, basically just step by step showing you how I do stuff in Audacity but leading up to that, like this part right now, and then after that, I'm going to discuss different aspects of the idea of the song, kind of the, the theoretical stuff, if you know what I mean, planning into the song and kind of fleshing things out even before you have anything to put down in vocals, if that makes sense. So for me, I started the process of making my song by just going through all the instrumentals that one of my favorite YouTube producers had on their channel. And already I might have offended some people because I know that there's people that think you should come up with the song, come up with the mood, the emotions, and then find an instrumental that fits it or contract, contract, contract someone to make the beat for you. But I just thought it would be more affordable to use a beat that was already out there and more feasible in terms of making a first song. Because instrumentals are pieces of art by themselves and they already convey some kind of emotion and some feelings that you can kind of bridge off of to make your song based on. So I was just scrolling through level and if I found a beat I would like, I would download it real quick and pull it into Audacity and kind of just freestyle some stuff on it. And that way I was able to see if the beat was promising and if I thought I could make a song out of it. I just kind of go about it by just drinking a bunch of coffee and getting a bunch of caffeine into my system to hopefully unlock my creative potential and just see if I can make something I can build off of. And I came across this one that felt different to me. It, it felt like it, it was uh, constructed stylistically a little bit different than the rest of their beats. So of course I downloaded it like I would with any promising instrumental and I brought it into Audacity and just freestyled on it. And I don't know, something just clicked and I was able to come up with a melody for the chorus that I felt was really good actually and kind of catchy. And it was the da 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 rain, da 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 snow. That was at the point that I came up with that. And I didn't even change anything from that going into the final song. Like that chorus and uh, even ending each line with the word rain and snow, that stayed over to the final song. So I think it's cool that at that moment in time, something special happened and I was able to come up with something that seemed really, really promising in terms of building a song off of. So at this point in the creative process, I feel like this is a really cool place to be because you've already had that the little spark of inspiration you need to get everything rolling. Because like I said, you got the chorus, the melody, you got really the, the beginning of the process of fleshing out the song done. And now it's time to write lyrics, right? Because we got the melody for the chorus. And I just kind of sat with notepad open and with my freestyle open in another monitor. And I just kind of play the freestyle, listen to how many syllables I needed and just write the lyrics for it. And I can't really give you that many tips, honestly, for writing lyrics, partly because I'm not that experienced of a lyric writer, but I just feel like, you know, write from your heart, write uh, something that means something and that other people are gonna be able to relate to. And obviously something that fits what your song is gonna sound like. 
musically. Like, you may have the greatest lyrics in the world, but if it doesn't fit the song and the beat, then find another beat, find another place to use those lyrics. So I came up with the lyrics, it was washed away like rain, heart frozen like snow, lies inside my mind thinking, what are you running for? I came up with those and I want to give you a word of advice when it comes to uh, coming up with the rest of the song beyond the chorus because I encountered a really bad creative block after I came up with the chorus and recorded the chorus because the verses were just not cooperating with me and it really got under my skin because I would record or I would freestyle what I wanted the first verse to be and I would get it in audacity and listen to it and I knew it was bad Honestly, I knew it wasn't good. It wasn't gonna make a good song, but at the same time I couldn't forget it and start fresh to freestyle the next attempt instead I had that old one just stuck in my head interfering with my creativity to come up with a new one and At the end of the day, I had to change things up like I had to go in with the low-pass filter and audacity and do this like muffle effect for a couple bars, or maybe it was in one bar, after the chorus. After the first chorus, I put on this muffle effect for a couple of seconds, and that is ultimately what allowed me to break through that creative block, because it just kind of changed the, the scenery and the landscape for me, and I was able to come up with something different, something unique and fresh. So after that was done, I did the yee, like the extended yeah, and then I was able to go, take a bow for the row, jeans got me feeling great, yeah, I just freestyled, got the melody and then went back like I did with the chorus and wrote the lyrics for that part of the song. And yeah, we're getting real close to having the idea of the song ready and just going into the studio or going into your bedroom with your mic and recording it and getting all those raw vocals down into Audacity so you can edit it and ultimately make the song. So yeah, I think we're rapidly approaching that part of the video where we go from the background of the music or from the inspiration of my song to more of the technique and the structured part of just recording vocals in general and editing music vocals in general. I'm gonna go through the process of that. Uh, I don't have anything else to say about the background of my song or how I came up with it. We are gonna jump back to ad-libs after this segment of the video, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. Hey, welcome to the recording and editing segment of this video. Now, this may seem like a repeat of a lot of older videos I've done on just recording and editing with particular microphones, but keep in mind this segment is music focused, so it's going to include specific effects just for singing and rapping, like autotune and reverb. Recording vocals for a song is really simple with Audacity, but I guess it's also really easy to mess up, as a lot of my commenters seem to have found. So getting started, in a blank Audacity project, you're going to want your first track up top to be the instrumental of your song. Then you'll need to go to Tracks, Add New, then Mono Track to make a new track for each separate part of your song. I'm going to jump to the final finished Audacity project for my song, and you can see it's a lot more complicated than just one vocal track and one instrumental track. This is important though, I recommend you make a new track for each chorus group, each verse, ad-libs, everything, just so you can stay on top of things and not confuse yourself. So back to actually recording these parts, once you have the instrumental up top and a new track to record to, click at the beginning of the new track, hit record, and go to town. Record just that part of the song, whether it's a verse or a chorus, and that's essentially the process you're going to follow to record the entirety of your song and just get those unedited vocals into Audacity. For me, the real skill or art here is not singing talent or recording a great take, it's patience. Keep re-recording, listening to your own vocals until everything sounds perfect. Editing and effects are not going to make a bad take sound good. Alright, this project you're looking at here is Tears from the Sky again, except completely unedited. The only thing that's been done here is a tiny bit of pitch correction throughout and I've also edited out my breaths. So everything else is completely raw. Now, the editing process requires a bunch of plugins and effects, and from past videos, I know it gets a bit tedious to work through this part, so I'm going to switch things up today. This time, all the specific settings for the plugins I use are in the description for me to take notes on or do whatever with, and I'm just going to quickly play through each plugin as I add it on my vocals so you can hear what it does. We was washed away like rain, heart frozen like snow, lost inside my mind thinking what you running for. We was washed away like rain, heart frozen like snow, lost inside my mind thinking what you running for. We was washed away like rain, heart frozen like snow, 
Lost inside my mind thinking what you're running for We just washed away like rain Heart frozen like snow Lost inside my mind thinking what you're running for We just washed away like rain Heart frozen like snow Lost inside my mind thinking what you're running for We just washed away like rain Heart frozen like snow Lost inside my mind thinking what you're running for we was washed away like rain, heart frozen like snow. Lost inside my mind, thinking what you're running for. Yeah, I know layering effects on vocals and audacity can be difficult and complicated, but the basic idea is you pitch correct, then crisp up the vocals, then add effects like echo and reverb. This has been the recording and editing segment of this video to get all that technical stuff down, and now we'll transition back to just tying things up with your song. So hopefully that recording and editing segment of the video was a useful resource to you and you're able to get stuff out of it and kind of help solidify your knowledge of Audacity. And of course, feel free to just replay that segment and pause and just kind of experiment with stuff so you can get those skills and the fundamentals of mixing music and Audacity down. And transitioning back into uh, kind of finishing up your song at this point, I do want to say that even once you've came up with the lyrics and the melodies and you've recorded them and edited them, you might be tempted to just think, oh, the song's done at this point. And for people that say that, I wanna recommend for you to go and listen to Highest in the Room, Travis Scott, but the unreleased demo version of it. Because that's basically what we're talking about there. The vocals are mixed down and everything sounds like what your song should sound like at this point but it sounds bad because there's no reverb there's no ad libs there's no background vocals it's just like the shell of a song to be honest so i'd encourage you to think about your song in the same way and in that it's not even done at this point and that you need to put some finishing touches on it that vocal magic to make it feel complete but my song at this point i was just looking at it can i add harmonies can i add background vocals can i add ad libs that are going to make it feel more complete and if you listen to any song carefully or if you listen to my song carefully you'll hear these things and while you may not pick up on them while you're listening to the song just as a normal person would they're definitely there they're definitely present and they're definitely important to have in a song uh like you may not notice but i did a one octave up harmony uh, at the very end of each line of the chorus. So if the chorus was, was washed away like rain, in the background, you'd hear, if that makes sense, I did like this one octave up thing and I used the auto tune to kind of bring it down or uh, do a kind of riff thing with the notes. I'm not the greatest at explaining it, but listen to the song, you'll hear it, it's one octave up and it just kind of spatially makes the chorus sound a little bit more satisfying and more pleasing to listen to. And really just going through the whole song with that ideology of trying to add to the song without distracting people, I just listened to the verse. And if I needed to add a yeah after a particular line, or if I needed to do a harmony, then I do that. And when it comes to music theory, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When it comes to harmonies and just singing talent in general, I'm not the greatest. So please go a little bit easy on me in the comments when it comes to that. But this final finishing touch uh, is very important to make your song pleasing to listen to and something that people want to come back to and listen over and over and hopefully add to their playlist and listen to for the rest of their life. <laughs> um, and just beyond that, reverb, distortion, uh, echoes just used stylistically uh, as effects in songs and not necessarily as just, you know, rudimentary just mixing vocals. Like, in Life is Good, uh, before I think it's the second chorus of Future's part, he's like going Birkin with the echo. You know what I mean? It's just like build ups and stuff like that. I can't explain it. You gotta just go through your song and experiment with echoes and different effects and distortion. Uh, and sometimes, like what I'll do with ad libs, is you gotta just bring down the the dry of the reverb so it's just this big spacey wet reverb in the background. You just gotta experiment with this kind of stuff. But hopefully at this point, if you're able to kind of get something out of each part of this process that I've been describing so far, then at this point you've got a finished, really nice, uh, catchy song sitting on your hands and just, just a gold mine of streams and plays and whatever once you put it out there. Hopefully you got something out of this video and let's get into that B-roll wrap up 
to uh, finish out this video. Tears for the Sky was a big project for me because I'm pretty new to making it and releasing music, but at the same time, I'm really happy with the outcome and grateful for the positive response from all you guys. So with it being said, I really just wanted to share the behind the scenes and the process of making this song. So I hope you're able to learn some stuff for this video and push your own music journey forward just a tad. Besides that, I do want to make an announcement for all you aspiring artists out there. If you like the sound of my music, I'm going to start doing $5 features. I know that may seem like a super low price for kind of investing in someone else's art, but I think it'll pay off because we can make something dope together, and it also helps us gain exposure as we grow together as artists. So like I said, it's a limited time thing, click the link in the description or DM me on Instagram to get things started. That's it for this video, thanks for being here, and I will see you in the next one.